Hey everybody, John Sievers again with Wool Car Kia here in beautiful San Antonio, Texas at our new location. And today we're gonna to be going over the all new 2021 Kia Sportage and this is the EX model. Now let's talk a little bit of history as far as the Kia brand. You know, the Sportage has been the longest running vehicle that they've had in North America. It actually started back in 1993 and really kind of launched that platform of the mid to compact SUV market. And has really been the staple for this brand and is probably one of the more well-known ones. Doesn't get enough credit as you would think because they have all new vehicles such as like the Stinger, the K900, the uh, Kia Telluride. So yeah, it kind of, you know, put baby in the corner a little bit, but this vehicle still has so much to be able to offer and being the pioneer that really launched the brand in North America, it's very fitting that we go back and talk about it. So just real quick, underneath the hood, you have a, a four-cylinder engine made it with a six-speed automatic transmission, uh, 181 horsepower and 175 foot-pounds of torque, so a very spunky motor. Been around for a while, so it's tried, true, tested. Doesn't have to work out any kinks or bugs when you start getting into new technologies as well. So if you're looking for that reliability and that dependability that you expect with the Kia brand, obviously you're getting it. The front end design has had a couple different tweaks over the years, but nothing too dramatic that you would see coming from like a completely rebuilt or redesigned uh, model. But one of the few things we want to be able to talk about and kind of go over is going to be some of the gadgets, but also the U in an SUV, which is the utility. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back. This is where this car is really going to shine. Now being the EX model, you do have the push button start ignition, the smart uh, key as well. You do have the power rear liftgate, which can be you know, operated from inside the vehicle, the key fob, or from the back. But look at the amount of storage space you have back here. I like this because not only is the opening on the bottom of your liftgate nice and wide, so if you do have a bigger item, let's say a stroller, on a big screen TV, ice chest, very easy to be able to fit the wider items in. And you can see that it almost lines up perfectly with the wheel well. So if it'll get in through this bottom part, you can push it all the way forward. But also it mates up to a completely flat surface. So there's no dip. So if you're getting something heavy back out, you don't have to lift it up to get it back out. Now you do have your spare tire, jack equipment, everything located into the rear. It is a space saver, but is the same height as the tire that's on the car. So it won't throw off the center of balance. Uh, once again, be able to help out with weight and then kind of encourage you to get your flat tire fixed a little bit quicker. And everything that you need to be able to change it is back here. But remember with World Car, you have the lifetime roadside assistance. So be able to call the 1-800 number, tell them where you're at in all 50 states. They'll somebody, send somebody out to actually be able to change it for you. Or if you're doing, you know, a little bit of information with your uh, pre-teens as far as how to take care of your car, you want to be able to demonstrate it, that's where everything's at. Now this is a 60-40 split folding rear seat. Pretty traditional, which you'd see with uh, all the other SUVs in its segment. So one side or the other, both at the same time. And that'll create a nearly flat surface all the way up to the front seat. So if you have a larger item, you can still be able to move it around. One really cool feature I like about these lift gates is you can see I'm six foot three, six, three and a half, just about. This thing lifts up pretty tall. So let's say that you're a little bit of a shorter person and you don't want to be able to have to reach for that. Or you live in a garage, I live in a house that has a garage that's, you know, got a storage up above or isn't that tall. Key has already thought about that. So once you get your tailgate right to where you want it, to a specific height, press and hold the close and open button. Hear it beep twice. Now, every time that you open up that lift gate, it's only going to open up to this one spot. Pretty ingenious. Now, to be able to reset that or get it to any other one that you want, simply lift it to where you'd like for it to be, press and hold. That is now the new setting. Small things like that is really kind of shows the amount of detail and the amount of engineering they put into it. And we kind of listen back to customer feedback and responses, you know, as far as what's really important to them. So. Let's say that you live in a town home or a condo and you have a very small area and you don't have a lot of space up on the top, that's obviously gonna be able to help out as far as damaging, uh, keep from damaging the rear end of the vehicle. Now let's get into the back. Normally we start into the front, but the back seats as far as the amount of space, love it back here. Wow, lots of space back here. Typical SUV, you do have the stadium style seating. What that's gonna do is kind of raise up the rear passengers a little bit to help out with leg room. So instead of kind of squatting down, you're still sitting pretty tall and have a little bit more room in a smaller package. So me being on the taller side, yeah, ample headroom, ample leg room. You have this nice perforated seat, the leather that continues from the front into the rear. 
two power outlets so your 12 volt and your usb back here so everybody can be able to charge a electric device or you know usb for your smartphones tablets whatever it may be and also rear air conditioning vents so you don't have to be solely dependent on the ac from the front you can also be able to get air circulation into the rear pretty standard nice center console that pops down two cup holders along with storage into both the doors but the big thing you notice sitting back here is this panoramic roof it is absolutely massive I don't mean massive, I mean it's going all the way back, so it's just not a little cheetah roof where you see from here, you know, it is completely above me, which is nice, so if, you know, you got kids or just want to be able to give a view for people, you know, looking out the back, everybody can really be able to enjoy it, but adds a lot of nice ambient light into the cabin, but the way that it's tinted is it's not blaring down on top of you, so if you like that nice open look and feel, but you don't want all the extra heat and light that comes with it, this is just absolutely perfect. I think it really adds it and also opens everything up so it feels a lot more spacious inside of here. Other than that, pretty typical. So you got your cargo holder, you know, your nets back here. So if you got something loose, you know, pens, you know, envelopes, whatever it is that you may want to be holding, you can have it back here, just stuff for the kids as well. But like I said, the big part is the space. Very supportive seats, very comfortable seats, lots of room, huge sunroof, great place to be. Now. Let's go back to what everybody wants to see, all the gadgets and fun stuff up front in the driver's seat. So let's go check that out. I ah, still can't get over the sound of those doors closing, that nice solid thud. So with the EX model, you do get the keyless go. So once again, smart key just has to be inside the vehicle, foot on the brake, press the start button. Just as simple as that. Now let's talk about adjustability. You do have a 10-way power driver seat with lumbar support too. So if you got a little bit of a lower back problem or just want that extra support on longer road trips, you have that too. But just the amount of space and configurability, really, really good. And the seat itself, it's got nice bolsters on the side. They're not overpowering, you know, they're just not sticking to the side of you. They just kind of give the right amount of support. So especially if you are gonna drive this vehicle, let's say kind of down, you know, a dirt trail or you're doing a little bit of off-roading with it, you know, you're not gonna be thrown all over the place. It's gonna kind of keep you snugged into one spot. Very typical, the Kia brand, as far as the layout, everything's very simple and easy to be able to use. Everything's right within fingertips reach, but also seems like everything's in the spot where it should be. Driver's door, power windows, door locks, mirrors, pretty typical. I like about this vehicle, especially for one that's in this segment, is the auto power folding mirrors. So you can set that up to where when you turn the vehicle off, these will automatically fold in. So there's no need to have to be able to manually do it yourself or worry about somebody nicking them going through a parking lot or even if it's just getting into a tight garage. Once you set that, lock the vehicle, the mirrors will automatically fold in. Once you hop inside the car and start it, they automatically fold out or you can just be able to do it manually from here as well to where they'll just be out all the time and you can just fold them in when need be. Let's say you're going through a drive through at the CVS or something, be able to have that really cool feature. Tons of storage down here in both door pockets. Once again, you got a water bottle holder up front and of course space for anything else over here on the side that you can think of. Steering wheel, a little bit of a larger one, kind of reminiscent of the SUVs of the day. You know, something that's gonna be a little bit more of a truck feel, which is nice. You have a tilt and also a telescopic steering wheel. And that's good because depending on how tall you are, you don't wanna be sitting right on top of the steering wheel to be able to reach the pedals. You wanna be able to get yourself comfortable there with the visibility. So then the steering wheel is designed to be able to adjust in and out and up and down for that. So if you're a taller person like myself, you wanna have the steering wheel a little bit further out so you have a comfortable, relaxed feel on the wheel, you can be able to adjust it that way as well. Or if you're a little bit shorter, you can push it in so you can get comfortable with the pedals. Gauges are gonna be the same that you see a lot of the other keys. Your RPM, speedometer, fuel gauge, and temperature gauge is all gonna be the analog. I like that nice red and that nice soft white so it helps reduce you know, eye fatigue while driving the car, especially for long durations at night. Steering wheel controls are still gonna be the same from a lot of the other keys too. So all your Bluetooth hands-free phone system, your volume, radio controls, everything's gonna be located over here on the left side. On the right side, it's gonna have everything from your smart cruise control to your information display settings right up here onto the dash windshield wipers and blinkers, all in the same place that you know, you'd see with every other vehicle. Over here on the top, we already said that you do have this nice panoramic sunroof. This is power and it slides up and over. And just, once again, just a massive sunroof. I mean, it really opens up pretty large. So not only do you get the good view, but then a lot of open air as well, if you have that open. And then, 
the power sunshade and that is no slouch that thing really books it too so it doesn't take forever and a day to be able to go ahead and close it up you know even though it's like the little things that you think of like you no know, you're sitting here about to turn off your car want to close the sunshade i would sit here for 20 seconds waiting to be able to do it what was that less than 10. so it moves it books pretty quick you do have an auto dimming rear view mirror your compass is going to be located right up here as well the home link controls so garage door clickers gate clippers for a neighborhood or a apartment complex even lighting for your house, you can be able to program that so you can have the exterior interior lights for your house already on when you pull up to your home. And everything from your Uvo and SOS is going to be located right up here as well. Now starting over with your center stack here, everything from your AC controls to navigation, all this is going to be located right up here. And the one thing I love about the Kias is just, once again, how quick and responsive they are. So it's just one quick slide. Everything's very snappy. Let's say that I want to be able to go to the nav menu. You'll we'll see, well, we've got to have the SD card inside there, but everything's very quick and snappy. Let's go to climate, right? See, it's not a big, long, drawn out deal. Very quick, very easy to operate. If we go back through our menus, you'll we'll see that you have your Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well. So a lot of people are going towards that where they're using their smartphones and devices to be able to use for their navigation systems and of course their media inputs. So having that seamless transition from the device into your car really just makes a much more enjoyable experience and I think a lot of people notice that they'd rather use the systems off their phone than what would come with the vehicle itself. Now you do have the traditional knobs, I love the knobs, so volume control, tuning and adjustment located right here. But then all your little quick features that you would want from your setup to navigation to your actual nav menus be able to go ahead and seek through your radio stations and then go through your different media devices. Air conditioning is the same way. You do have a dual climate control, so driver and passenger both have their different settings. Remember those rear AC vents that we talked about in the back? Those are all going to run off of whatever the driver has it set at. So if the driver has it set at 60, that's what's going to come out through the back. Now you can sync all these together to where it comes out at one temperature, but let's say that you want to be able to have a different one. You can see right up here in your display, like we can have one side set at 64 and the other one set at 86. So it'll go ahead and take where the air is going, the fan speed, and what the ambient temperature is inside the car and automatically adjust all those things to be able to make sure that everyone stays comfortable inside of it. Now this thing is riddled with technology and safety features such as your blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, all the kind of bells and whistles that you'd expect out of a vehicle of this caliber, right? even down to the comfort feature. So not only do you have a great air conditioner, which is a necessity here in South Texas, you do have a heated steering wheel. Yes, I know it sounds redundant, but you know, those two months out of the year, it is a nice feature to be able to have. You have three-way heated seats and also actively cooled seats. So it's gonna push cooled air through the two front seats on those hot 100 plus temperature days here in South Texas really makes a huge difference. And this isn't just kind of a gimmick. I mean, as soon as you turn it on, you actually feel it, which is nice. So really, if you've never had them before, once you get them in a car, you can't live life without them ever again. Now you do have your 12 volt power outlet, USB charging point as well. Wireless charging for your cell phone right into the front. So if your cell phone does have the smart charging, all you have to be able to do is place it down there, automatically take care of it. Now remember we talked about this is mated to a six-speed automatic transmission and you do also have a manual shift mode. Why is manual shift mode important? Let's say that you're towing a light trailer, going up a tough grade, you know, up uh, through the hill country or even coming down a pretty steep grade, being able to have control over your transmission selection so you're not actually wearing down your brakes going down a hill, but then also being able to have a little bit more control of your throttle position and the gearing while going up a hill too. So it's going to kind of keep it from wanting to jump through different gears and constantly changing. You want to keep that forward momentum going. You can have a little bit more uh, uh, selectability at that point and a little bit more control. Electronic parking brake, pretty standard with a lot of vehicles like this. The auto hold, so if you take your foot off the brake to be able to hit the gas and you're on a hill, the vehicle won't roll backwards. But this also does have a downhill brake control, which is really cool. So if you are going down a very steep grade, let's say off of a you know off-road path, it's going to go ahead and take the gearing inside the transmission, but then also individual brakes and apply them as needed to make sure that you can maintain a constant, safe, and controlled descent down any steeper hills. And then your typical drive modes. You have normal, eco, and sport. And once again, eco is going to go ahead and make sure that it kind of numbs down the throttle a little bit. You know, it's going to take a little bit back from the air conditioning, nothing that you would really be able to notice, but to help conserve as much fuel as possible. 
putting into the sport kind of does exactly the opposite keeps the gearing a little bit longer keeps it higher in the rev range everything kind of gets tightened up a little bit so to give you much more driver feedback and then of course your normal mode which you would just be doing 98 percent of the time while driving the vehicle now even with the backup cameras love these larger displays now you can be able to hear that beeping right now that's letting us know that we are closer to any other objects because it does have rear sonar systems uh, that play along with it so now you get a visual cue but then also a uh, audible one as well so if you're backing into a tight parking spot or a garage something you know somebody may have put a bike there not only if you missed it on the screen you can be able to hear it but that's also for front and rear so if even you're pulling into a tighter parking spot in the front you can be able to hear how close you're getting to an object before it's time to pull out the insurance card. And then storage abundance, very big deep storage compartment right here, of course your front glove box. And what this car really embodies is the starting SUV. Like I said, this has been the longest running model that Kia has had in North America. And you know, it, I, I wanna say it doesn't get as much respect as it possibly should. But you know, this is what launched the brand. This is what's kept it and really kind of started the segment of the smaller to mid-size SUVs. Still keeping with all of its capabilities. It's you know around town city driving, but then also the ruggedness that you'd be able to get from an SUV. Now they do have all-wheel drive options too. So if you decide that you are going to be hitting the trails or the beaches, you know, you go with the all-wheel drive models, so obviously going to give you a little bit more capability. South Texas, you see a lot more just the front wheel drive because we rarely get snow and ice, but that is available. So if you are planning on moving up to more northern climates, it's going to be able to tackle just about anything you throw at it. But this has been the heart and soul of what Kia has been putting out for a while. And just for everything that you get with it, it's still kind of light years ahead of a lot of the competition because everybody can have air conditioned seats. Everybody can have a backup camera and navigation systems and Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, blind spot monitoring. Those things you see are pretty common with vehicles in this segment. But a lot of those have just kind of lost the, the history behind them as far as how capable is it? How much space do you have? What can you actually be able to do with it? And I really applaud Kia for keeping with that because, you know, it seems like you're just driving larger cars. This still has the SUV feel, it still has the SUV capability. You still sit up a little bit taller, a little bit higher off the road. So they never kind of deviated away from their roots. And because of that, I think, you know, this is one of the last few standing utility, sport utility vehicles that can be able to encompass everything from, you know, being able to go just as a daily driver, to head to the beach, to go out to a camping site, or just to be able to use it to haul kiddos around or just some friends. And that's what really kind of keeps us, it's still got a soul that goes along with it. And of course, everything else that, you know, all the safety and luxury features are obviously a plus. But I think they've done a really good job keeping with that and being the staple for what this car really represents. Well guys, that's really covered a lot of the bigger features of the 2021 Kia Sportage. Like I said, it's been the one that started the brand, been around the longest, and probably one of the more recognizable ones. And you know, it would be traditional roadside reviews if we didn't go back to the roots of our manufacturers and kind of celebrate that and show what they're really all about. Once again, if you're liking the videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You know, make sure that you hit the bell too. So every time that we release a new video that you get a notification on it, we're putting one out about every week or so. If there's any vehicles that you wanna see in the future or any content that you like, or that you'd like to be able to see in newer videos, make sure you leave a comment below. We read all of those. We wanna be able to make sure that we're putting out the best content as possible. But guys, thanks for watching. Once again, my name is John Sievers with Wool Car Kia here in beautiful San Antonio, Texas. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Y'all take care now.